So you can see my uh, pomegranate is coming along. Here's my source material. So remember your goal is to take a source material and do a faithful copy, but you can put a new spin on it because you're taking something real and you're making it into a painting. So we're not worrying about being completely realistic in our, in our process. Remember also to try different colors, so explore some different things. So we're gonna drop in the leaves, maybe add a cast shadow. You can kind of see the whole process come together. So as I'm working, you can see I'm starting with green, but it's not gonna stay just green. We'll add in some other colors and you can kind of see that it's on a green background, which is not ideal, but I'm gonna show you some tips on how to manage that. So because I did the leaf second, um, you can actually see that the leaf is gonna look closer than the pomegranate because the green is on top of the red. But that's why I'm not gonna do the leaf last. I still have a little bit of touching up to do on this pomegranate, so then it'll kind of all come together. You can see I loaded up my brush with yellow and green, because then I can get both of them on the brush strokes at the same time. All right, so you can see um, where we're at right now. So I have the leaves enough of the way I want them. And two things about that. One, um, the leaves are not the focal point, so I want them there. They're on the object and they help round it out and balance it. But I'm not gonna go as much all in on the leaves as I am here, because I, you know, I just want them to be there. I don't want them to be the focal point. Put a little bit more emphasis in terms of colors, brightness, values, you want this to be the part that catches the eye, not the leaf. Second thing, normally I would not have done a green background. So since it was here, I used it. So you can see how this green is really not standing out. Normally, if I knew I was gonna be using a lot of red and I had a lot of green going on, I would pick a color that would offset that. So I would probably have started with like a purple um, background to offset all the other colors I was using or even you know maybe some yellows or something like that so when I do my cast shadow there's a little bit of a um, shadow underneath here so now I can kind of use the cast shadows to offset all that green a little bit so as I'm starting the cast shadow similarly to what we've talked about before I need to get my darkest value right alongside here I can't have it darker here and then lighter for things to be believable that they have form and mass they need to have a believable shadow Part of this is as I'm dropping this color, see how automatically it's almost wiping it away. So experiment with different angles. Load up your brush a little bit differently and just make sure that you get your darkest value right up hugging next to your object. Remember, I'm still gonna go over 
you know, I said I wasn't 100% done with the pomegranate yet. I have a little bit more to finish up here. So that way I know um, I can come back over it with a little bit of red or purple right here. So if I go a little bit into the pomegranate, it's okay. Um, but I want to make sure that my shadow is darker here. And, you know, if anything, it's going to be lighter over here. If you notice, you tend to just lighten your um, brush stroke as you, you know, kind of go. Um, experiment with doing things upside down too, because you might under you might realize that you know you can control the paint differently in different directions. I am not um, going to entirely cover up what I have. I'm going to use the texture of the canvas. I'm going to do a little bit more cast shadow, and then we'll be back. All right, so you can see I kind of got my cast shadow going. I got a real strong shadow over here, but because the light is kind of coming right here, um, I do have a little bit of cast shadow that's not as dark on this side, so I got most of it here. So, you know how I was talking about how these leaves were kind of mixing up with the background. Um, you can kind of see right here what I'm doing is just brushing a little bit of yellow to kind of make the edge of, um, you know, like a table or something. So as I drop this down, what's happening is uh, giving me, you know, a lighter value and it's going to be a little bit more of a contrast to my object so that my object will pop a little bit. So I'm going to finish that up and then we'll come back. All right, you can see I add a little bit of yellow back here to kind of separate this and it kind of gives me a, a little bit of a, like, what it's sitting on. So it gives me kind of a tabletop feel and cast shadow. So we're pretty much good to go. I could easily end and be done with this. So here's an object, simple enough object, just with a colored background. What I am going to do though is, remember how I said I wanted to make sure that um, this edge is nice and solid, you know, because I did the cast shadow after it. There's a little bit of this edge that I kind of want to bring back in. And there's a little bit of brightness I want to kind of bring into like a couple of these parts. This is a little bit flat. I'm just going to do one or two things to it and then pretty much done.